The Senate yesterday rejecting all gun bills. As expected, Democrats and Republicans took turns defeating dueling proposals on background checks and efforts to prevent terrorists from buying firearms. A story from Politico. Senate voted down the four separate gun measures Monday in the aftermath of the worst mass shooting in modern U.S. history. Showing the partisan perilous over gun control that has barely moved on Capitol Hill despite stream of continued gun violence across the country. Lawmakers took up two separate issues involving gun regulations, how to improve the nation's background check system for those who want to purchase firearms, and how to ensure that terrorists or those with terrorist ties do not obtain a gun. Those questions remained unresolved by lawmakers as of Monday night. Instead, Democrats made it clear they want to make it as painful for Republicans to oppose their gun amendments, whether through a flood of advocacy calls to their Senate offices or at the ballot box in November. Quote, some of this is going to turn into an electoral operation, said Senator Chris Murphy, a Democrat of Connecticut who led the Senate Democrats' early 15-hour gun filibuster last week. I'm going to be turning my attention to the November election. I'm going to take some of my energy and help make sure that people who cast the wrong vote don't come back to the Senate. This Chris Murphy is another loon of the Senate. He's out of Connecticut. We uh, earlier spoke about the New Hampshire senator who uh, said that everyone buying an AR-15 is just doing it for uh, bad reasons. Chris Murphy, headline from the Washington Post, Republicans have decided to sell weapons to ISIS. He said Monday, Democrats need to make gun control the integral part of their national security policy as they try to build a political movement to rival the National Rifle Association. You know what? I absolutely hope that Chris Murphy and some of these Democrats are successful in building up their anti-gun, anti-Second Amendment advocacy. I hope they make it a central theme going into the election, because, folks, let me tell you why. Right now, you have polling, national polling, and this always happens. Remember, this always happens. After a shooting tragedy, after a mass shooting, you have polls that spike for about two weeks afterwards that say, yes, we have to do something about it, then they crater. You look at what happened after Newtown, after the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting, when Democrats really pushed hard to go after guns, about a month or so afterwards, those polling numbers, and we're dealing with children here, about a month or so after the shooting deaths, those poll numbers for a greater gun control cratered. And in fact, in recent years, there has been more support for protecting the Second Amendment than there ever has been at least in modern history. There has been more support for backing of the Second Amendment. So this is why I hope that the Democrats really make this a central issue, because it will absolutely decimate them at the ballot boxes. If Democrats are out saying, we want to take your guns, we want to take your guns, those buying an AR-15, you're up to no good. You've got lunatics like Chris Murphy who's running around telling people, hey, Republicans want to sell guns to ISIS. I hope they continue this rhetoric because it'll come back and bite them. Because the vast majority of people in this country support the Second Amendment. They don't want greater gun control. You actually get into the numbers of people who want restrictions on gun control. No, it, it, it's not very high. Not as high as it used to be. You go back into the 90s, gun control support was huge. We're talking 60%, 70%. Whenever you had the assault weapons ban, they were able to get that through because there was popular support, overwhelming popular support of an assault weapons ban. 
but those numbers have cratered since. And the support for the Second Amendment has continued to go up. Now, you probably hear all these liberals out saying, oh, well, you, you we have polling data that shows uh, uh, people support background checks. Yes. The vast majority of people support background checks. Now, once you get into the details of what you want to do, those numbers come back down to earth. We have background checks. But when you ask the majority of Americans, should there be background checks? Just about everyone is going to say, yeah, there should be background. Of course there should be background checks. Because Democrats go around, they make it sound. Remember last week I had a story from CNN. CNN actually reported that it was easier to buy a gun than buying a puppy. CNN actually reported that it was easier to buy a gun than it was to buy cold medicine. Have you ever bought cold medicine? It's pretty easy. You walk into the store and you buy it. And so when these are the stories that the general public hears, they think all you have to do is walk in and you throw down some cash and you walk away with a gun. There's no background check. They just kind of look at you and they eye you over and they go, okay. That a lot. There are a lot of folks out there who think that's the process. There are a lot of Americans who have never bought a gun and who really buy into the CNN story that it's easier to buy a puppy than it is to buy a gun. And so they go around and they ask the question. In you know, media outlets, they go around and they ask the question, okay, should there be background checks? Should there be expanded background checks? Well, no one knows what that means. But it sounds good. So people say, well, yeah, sure, why not? But when you actually get into the meat of it, it's a losing issue for the Democrats. But this is, we'll get to the phones here in just a second. Here's what Chris Murphy had to say, his full little speech about Republicans being ISIS. Well, we've got to make it clear. A constant case that Republicans have decided to sell weapons to ISIS. Senator Chris Murphy said. That's what they've decided to do. ISIS has decided that the assault weapon is the new airplane. Republicans, in refusing to close the terror gap, refusing to pass bans on assault weapons, are allowing these weapons to get into the hands of lone wolf attackers. We've got to make this connection, and we've got to make it in very stark terms. This guy is a moron. The assault weapon, which the AR-15 is not an assault weapon. The assault weapon is the new airplane. Terrorists have been using bombs for decades. They've been using knives for decades and guns for decades. The Republican Party actually wants to stop ISIS. Chris Murphy, your party wants to do nothing. You want to grandstand on the Senate floor and talk about closing the gun show loophole, of which there is no gun show loophole. And now you want to make up a new term, the terror gap? And you take this type of language, you put it along with what uh, the senator from New Hampshire said, that these are U.S. senators. They're talking about you. They think you're evil because you support guns, because you support the Second Amendment, because you have an AR-15. They think you're no better than ISIS. And somehow I'm supposed to believe that these people are going to keep a good, updated list of terrorists? I mean, that is just pathetic. You got Chris Murphy, he's going out, he's blaming Republicans for ISIS. That Republicans are selling guns to ISIS. I'm sorry, which administration was it that sold guns to Mexican drug cartels? 
It wasn't the Bush administration, was it? No, that wasn't the Bush administration. Oh, yeah, it was the Obama administration. Okay. Again, Republicans are trying to rally support to kill ISIS, to go after the terrorists, to talk about what is really impacting the United States. It's not guns. It's not the AR-15. We are in a war against the Islamic State. We're at war against Al-Qaeda. We're at war against radical Islam. And you got people like Chris Murphy who is at war with you. You have Senator Shaheen in, in New Hampshire. She's at war with you. They don't give a damn about Islamic terrorism. They're at war with the U.S. Constitution. Guess who else is? ISIS. Chad Hasty Show. We'll be right back. All right, back on the Chad Hasty Show, News Talk 790 KFYL. Thank you very much for tuning in. We've been talking about uh, some of the language that Democrats uh, have been using to go after Republicans and after the Second Amendment. Let's head back to the phones. And uh, Gina, you're on KFYL. Good morning, Chad. Good morning. The, Demo- the Democrats are framing the whole narrative. The Republicans have got to be proactive. I think that the Republicans should come back with it with a required carry. Hmm. Yeah, where, where everybody, you know what? Everybody, 1865, you're required to carry. Now, there's probably an easy opt-out, so those of you who don't want to, don't have to, but if there was a required carry, everybody 1865 without a criminal record carries. And, and teach this in the schools. By third grade, kids need to be learn gun safety. By sixth grade, they need to be able to do competitive shooting and self defense. Make it tight to federal funding. If your school has it has a competitive UIL shooting program, self defense and and marksmanship program, you get extra federal funding. If you carry, you get a tax break. The Republicans are allowing the Democrats to take total control of the narrative. Without saying anything to put, oh, uh, gee, maybe, uh, kinda. So, they, they need to get ahead of this. They need to get out in front of it. Well, I'll tell you this. If we are going to have a, uh, a required carry, it's gonna have to be a generational deal because I, I go out to too many places and there are a lot of people that, and they just don't need to carry. I understand that. <laughs> I do. I, I get that. Like this, but, uh, know, like, like this uh, was, senator in New Hampshire. I don't want her to carry. I, I don't. I don't want her to carry either, but she didn't learn gun safety in the third grade. Yeah. And she didn't learn marksmanship as a kid. And she didn't understand how, how to handle a, a, a weapon, how to defend herself with a weapon. And, and, and the, the ins and outs of, of being a responsible adult and being able to defend yourself with a weapon. Yeah. Of any kind. Of any kind, whether it be a firearm or a, you know, a samurai sword. These people are, the, who are trying to kill us don't care. That's right. The, the, if they can't get a gun, they'll use a sword. They'll use a knife. They'll use a car. They'll use whatever. Mm-hmm. They'll use an airplane. Yeah. So, so the gun argument is, is not a gun argument, really. And, and, the, and the Republicans continue to allow the Democrats to, to shape the narrative. Yeah. Gina, thank you very much. Thanks. Bye. Have a good one. I actually, she just reminded me. There, I saw a video on Facebook. I, and I don't have time to tell the full story. But in Colorado at a middle school, for about a week, they teach gun safety. At a middle school, they bring in instructors. So they, don't, they don't fire the guns or anything. But they bring in the gun. They show the kids, okay, here's how you clean a gun. Here's, you know, how, you know, you Here's the safety. Here's what you do. They they look at all different kinds of rifles and and handguns, and it's a week long course on gun safety. I love it. I think that's uh, that we do need that in every school. When we come back, we'll get to you guys on hold. All right, Chad Hasty Show News Talk seven ninety KFYO. Let's head out to shallow water and Daryl. You're on KFYO. Good morning, Chad. I bet your blood pressure's up a bit. Oh, just, a little, just a little bit, but and I only blame idiots in Congress for that. Well, if they wouldn't me, say stupid things, I'd be okay. Let me add some more fuel to the fire. Oh no. Yeah, I heard yesterday that the uh, Supreme Court has let a ruling. I don't remember if it's five or seven states stand yeah. on uh, assault weapons. Yeah, they uh, they chose not well. The, the Supreme Court chose not to hear the case. Which makes what they've said so far stand. Right. So uh, the, the court system is not with us. 
period. Well, and again, I don't know what the vote was on that. I, I've got to, I need to go back and see what the, uh, you know, or, you know, if they even vote to, I, I got to go back and see why that wasn't, uh, why they decided not to take that up. But it's one of those where this is not new for the Supreme Court. Supreme Court, uh, 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 passed on a few other gun issues when Justice Scalia was alive and, uh, he was not happy about that. Right. Also, the other thing that I was going to talk about was terrorist watch lists. Who has it? Who's in charge of it? Yeah, where is it? Well, that's man. That would be up to we, the Department of Justice. We have a no-fly list. Yeah, which is a joke. Yeah. No, I'm with you, Daryl. That that was one of the big issues.